Good afternoon again to you all. It's Evan Snell for Umaklukul. Having looked at our 10 episodes on calculus, we are now looking at a 11th version and we'll be focusing on some old past exam papers and old exam examples. Okay, so again, here's one that is almost similar to, to one we have seen before. Please remember that this is exactly what happens. The more past papers you do, the more questions you look at, the more you expose yourself to certain types of questions that will repeat over and over again. And hopefully that means that when you get to the exams, you will not be threatened by the questions you see. They will be slightly familiar to you because you have seen similar examples before. Okay, so here is a graph not drawn to scale. It is the function of f of x equals ax cubed plus bx plus 8. Again, I'll quickly highlight that. I do apologize if this thing is slightly grayer than, than, than expected. So over here we can see that the function is ax cubed plus bx plus 8. The point 2 naught, you can see that there, is on the graph and it is a turning point and they ask us to show that a equals minus a half and b equals six. This is very similar to a previous example. So let's go and have a look. What we said first was we know that this is an x and a y value so we can use that fact as number one realizing that asking us for a and b tells us that we are dealing with simultaneous equations Okay, so we've got a first equation coming from the x and the y value. And the second thing is because this is a turning point, we know that f dash will equal naught. And that's our second equation. So having a look at that, let's have a look here. I'm just going to shift things over a little bit to the right hand side here. Okay, so let's have a look. From the one, we know that f of x equals ax squared ax cubed, I'll fix that now, plus bx plus 8. Okay, we know that's ax, ax cubed plus bx plus 8, not ax squared, I apologize for that. And we know that if we put in the point 2 and minus 2, we're going to get naught. So we know that f of minus 2 equals naught. So this would equal, again, I can't believe I did that. Let me just quickly fix that. Again, my editor might have to take that out. ax cubed plus bx plus 8, and we know that f of minus 2 is going to equal naught, is going to therefore equal minus 8a minus 2b plus 8. Again, there's our first equation, but again, I can choose to simplify this by dividing by minus, four at this uh, minus 2 at this point in time, and I'll get 4a plus b minus 4. So over here, I just quickly, just to make my life a little bit easier, I've chosen to divide through by minus 2. My second equation is coming from the turning point, which is telling me that f dash, which in this case is 3ax squared uh, plus b. Okay, and we know that because this is a turning point, we know that f dash of minus 2 will also equal naught. So that will equal um, 12a plus b, and that is my second equation. So that's not too difficult to work with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write them together. I've got the 12a plus b equals naught, and my other equation was that naught equaled 4a plus b minus 4. Again, because these things have got b and b, okay, I can do it by substitution, but I'm going to choose to do it by elimination method. As a result, I know that I can subtract them. And so let's have a look what happens when I do subtract them. I'm going to have naught minus naught is naught. 4a minus 12a is minus 8a. b minus b is naught. Minus 4 minus 4 is, sorry, minus 4 minus naught is minus 4, and as a result, what I'm now going to get is <clears throat> bring that over, divide by the minus 8, and I'll get that minus a half equals a. As they told us it would, we're getting the same answers then, should give me a warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing that I'm correct, so I move on with a lot more confidence, and then we can plug this back, back in to find b, so we now know that naught equals 12 times minus a half plus B, take the that across, 
plus, and we're going to get that 6 equals b as required. It is rather nice when you're doing a sum to know that you've got 5 out of 5, okay? And that you've got 5 marks in your back pocket moving on to the next question. We are now asked to move on and find the coordinates of q. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so q is there as our other turning point, okay? We now know that f of x equals minus a half x cubed plus 6x plus 8. Okay, q is a turning point. So if q is a turning point, we are going to take the first derivative, which we now know is going to be f dash of x equals minus 3 over 2x squared plus 6 which equals naught. I'm going to times through by 2, so I've got minus 3x squared plus 12 equals naught. I'm going to divide by minus 3 and get x squared minus 4 equals naught. So I'm going to get x equals 2 or x equals minus 2. We already knew that the x equals minus 2 was the value at p, so therefore the x value at 2 must be the value at q. Okay, and since we are looking for coordinates, I need to find a y value. And again, please don't forget that we do not plug it into the f prime, we plug it into the f for the original function because y equals f of x. And so as a result, when I plug in the y value of two, I get that f of two equals minus a half of eight plus 6 times 2 plus 8. So what do we get here? Okay, I got minus 4 plus 12, which is 8, plus another 8. I think I'm getting 16, which means that the coordinates of Q would be 2 and 16. Okay, so again, I'd encourage you, especially for those of you who are lucky enough to have, if, if you're writing a sentence which allow for write on papers, to fold the values in on the picture, okay? We should know that this turning point, this y cut would have been 8 just from the equation early on. Okay. Use your values to write down for which, for which things this thing will have only one real root. Okay. So if we shift this graph up, okay. So if we shift this graph up such that this value here, now remember t in this case is the same as our y intercept. Okay, now if we shift this graph up, that means that this graph would lie somewhere like that, okay, and would cut only once here on the far right. The fact that we raise this graph means that this turning point at P is now above the x axis and there'll be no other x cuts to the left, and knowing that an x cut is the same thing as a root, those concepts are largely interchangeable. So we know that on the one hand, t needs to be larger. So if you were moving it upwards, okay, we would realize that t would be larger than 8. Any movement upwards such that this y cut is above 8 means that the p turning point, the turning point that is currently at p, would be above the x-axis. However, if I was to move this graph down, Okay, so now I'm talking about moving this graph downwards. Okay, if I moved it down exactly 16, it would now sit and turn such that Q would be exactly on the x-axis. Okay, if I moved it down 16 units, then that would mean that this Y cut would now be at minus eight. So what I now need is I now need to move it beyond that point such that this turning point is now sitting totally in the fourth quadrant, okay? Which means that I now need a t value. I need a t value that would therefore be less than minus eight. So writing this in combination, I can't write it with an and because I can't have a number that is both bigger than eight and less than minus eight. So my answer here would be for 10.3, having discussed it, having done some thinking about it, what I'm getting here is that t is less than minus 8 or 
8 is less than t. t is an element of the real numbers. OK, so what I want to look at here is how question 2, question 10.1, OK, was not overly difficult to think about, and the doing was fairly difficult. Whereas in question 10.3, OK, it was four marks, and I, did, I wrote barely anything down on the page. It was mostly scribbles on my diagram, OK? And the thinking here was harder, but the doing here was supposedly easy. I just wrote down that t is greater than 8, or that t is less than minus 8. OK, so watch out for that in, in certain questions, OK? Where sometimes the thinking is easy and the doing is hard, or alternatively, the thinking is harder, but the result is, the reward is that despite, because of the harder thinking, the doing is actually slightly easier. Okay, so that was a nice exam question. Like I said to you, it was slightly familiar to us. We've seen similar ones before. Let's look at another one. Okay, this one again comes from a, a more recent exam paper. Okay, and what is different about it is that they start off by telling us information about f prime of x. Okay. Now, technically, the topic of integration is not part of school, but they're telling us that this, that the following information is given that f prime of x has this shape. Okay? We're told that this other fact, and we're going to be careful with the notation here, is no dash, so this here is about f of x. Okay? So f of x equals naught has one negative real solution. Okay? For what values of x is what values of x is f of x increasing? Now, what we need to realize is that an increasing function refers to the gradient. Okay, so they are asking us here is where is f prime greater than naught? Okay, so we need to translate their question into perhaps symbols that make a little bit more sense to us, that might make it a little bit easier to understand. But a, if this thing has got, if this function f of x is increasing, what we're talking about here is a function whose gradient is positive. So again, it's not difficult to realize that we're looking at the gradient, which is x plus one squared minus four. Okay, and we want that to be greater than naught. Okay, so what we have here is again x plus 1 minus 2, and x plus 1 uh, uh, plus 2. I fact factorizing the difference of two squares here, because we have a difference of two squares. I'm going to get x minus 1 and x plus 3. Again, they're combining a whole range of different topics together with us. So here they're doing um, quadratic inequalities. Here's our number line. The key values are minus 3 and 1. At minus 3, we have 0. At 1, we have 0. We look at what's going to happen to a large value. And for a large value, a big value, we know that putting a big value in here will give us a positive answer. That means in between the zeros, we have a negative answer. And on the far left, we have a positive answer. Greater than naught is another way of saying positive. And that means that these zones here are the zones that I want, the two that are to the outside. We are not being asked to include zero, therefore it is an open circle. And because it is as such, we're going to say that therefore our answer to this question are the x values to the left of minus three or the x values that are to the right of one. Okay, now I've been asked to sketch a <clears throat> to sketch this thing, and what I want to encourage you to do is to maybe have a thought as to what is the sketch of again quickly, what is the sketch of f of x look like? F prime of x look like, I apologize. F prime of x. So here we have our set of axes. I'm going to try line them up here as best as I can. Okay, so we know from the red function from f prime of x that it wants to be zero at one and at minus three. And that this function is coming in with a positive 
becoming negative and going off to become positive. Okay? Now, please remember that if we were speaking in, in for, forwards, we would say that to find a stationary point, we make f prime equal to naught. And we are normally saying the statement as follows, that to find a stationary point, you make f prime equal to naught. Well, it is equally true that if f prime equals naught, then what you have is a stationary point. So we know that on the actual function, on the actual function, okay, so on the graph of f of x, we know that there is a stationary point at minus, at a, with the x value of minus three, and there's a stationary point with an x value of one. So somewhere along this line here, okay, somewhere along this line here, there is a stationary point, and somewhere along this line here, there is a stationary point, okay? Again, we can do some work on it. We're told that this graph has got a single, okay, again, because we know that this thing has this, again, this is tractus, because we know that this a, this value here is positive, we know that this graph will, that the graph here of f of x will have a gradient that, uh, sorry, will have a shape that is of a positive graph. So it will have that shape, okay? So we know that the turning point at minus three is a local maximum, and we know that the turning point at one is a local minimum, okay? However, we now need to concern ourselves with the last piece of information. The last piece of information is that it has only got one negative real solution, okay? So what that tells us is that this graph turns over here in a, turns downwards, we know that it turns upwards, you know, this concave positive along this graph at y equals one, x equals one. And what we realize is that this turning point has to be above the x-axis because they tell us that this thing has got only one negative real solution, okay? So there are no other solutions to the right-hand side. In fact, there is only this one. So we know, okay, and the key here is, is that we know that this, turning point here has to be above, okay? So this one has to be above, this is the key, okay? So as a result, we realize that we need to join the turning points with a sort of S shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue with my, my, continue with my little curve, I'm gonna go up here. There are no X cuts to the far right for the function. And this graph does in fact cut once to the left of minus three. It has got a single negative real solution. Okay, so what we have here is a interesting question. And I've got um, another one here for us to look at quickly. Okay, again, a cubic function cuts the x-axis at these three points. Okay, show that the h of the, the full equation is that when there's an asymptote. Awesome now again, we are saying that solutions lead to X cuts, lead to factors, okay? What I'm saying is that all three of these things are the same idea, okay? So therefore, if I have an X cut, I also have a factor, okay? And so I'm suggesting I'm putting forward that I can therefore realize that h of x must equal something of x plus 3, x plus 3 over 2, and x minus 1, because those three factors would give us x equaling minus 3, x equaling minus 3 over 2, or x equaling 1 as our solutions. So the X cuts and solutions and the factors are largely interchangeable ideas. The only thing we need to realize is the need for a scalar, this A value in front here, because if you might look at it, X times X times X will give me X cubed, 
and I know that I need to get to minus 2x cubed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose to multiply this thing out. So I've got um, x plus 3. I've got, um, so we can realize quite quickly, hopefully, that because of this function, because of this uh, minus 2x cubed over here, that a would have to equal minus 2. So already now we could replace that, um, that a value there with a minus 2. And now what we need to do is to multiply this thing out. And what I'm going to get here is x squared um, minus 1 plus 3 over 2, so plus a half x minus uh, 3 over 2. Again, um, I'm going to multiply it out even further. So what I'm going to get here is equals minus 2 x cubed. Let's just have a look at what happens with the um, x squared. So I'm going to get plus 3 um, plus, uh, plus 3 uh, plus a half of them. So that's plus 7 over 2 over them, plus 3 and a half of them. So plus 7 over 2 x squared. Again, let's see what happens with the um, the x's. I'm going to get 3 over 2 and minus 3 over 2. So actually, these two are falling away. I'm getting no x's. And the 3 times the minus 3 over 2 is giving me an answer of minus 9 over 2. I multiply in this, uh, multiply in the front coefficient of minus 2. And I'm going to get minus 2x cubed. Minus 2 times uh, plus 7 over 2 is minus 7x squared. And minus 2 times minus 9 over 2 is plus 9, which is exactly what they gave us as our answer. Again, I proceed knowing that I've got the answer correct. Okay, 8.2, let's have a look at the next one. Calculate the coordinates of the turning point of H, okay? Turning points of H. So what we need to do is find H dash. It equals minus 6x squared minus 14x. Okay, these values are looking like they're going to be unpleasant, but they, we are big kids, we can deal with it. Okay, so we've got um, confirming minus 6x squared minus 14x equals naught. So we can divide by minus 2, and we're going to get 3x squared uh, plus 7 equals naught. So what am I doing wrong here? Okay, our first derivative is minus 6x squared minus 14x equals naught. Okay, um, what am I doing that's silly? Oh, I left the x out, like a silly person. Okay, that's really basics. So I've got x times 3x uh, plus 7 equals naught. So x equals naught, or x equals minus 7 over 3. So the y value at naught is going to be 9. So our one turning point is at naught and 9. And our h of minus 7 over 3, I'll take out to calculate, and let's work it out quickly. So minus 7 divided by 3 equals, I'm going to store that in my memory of my calculator, I've now got mi minus 2 times the memory cubed um, minus 7 times the memory squared plus 9 equals, in this case, minus 100 over 27. Funny how that number came up the other day uh, in the previous sum as well. So our turning points are going to be 0 and 9 and minus 7 over 3 and minus 100 over 27. Okay, again, determine the values of a x for which h will be decreasing. Okay, so what we're looking at here is if we want this thing to be decreasing, we've seen that at decreasing functions where f prime is less than naught. Okay, so we now know 
or 8.3, moving quickly on from 8.2, 8.3, that we are looking at key values of um, naught and minus 7 over 3. At these values, the first derivative is naught. Okay, this is a originally a negative parabola. So when I put in the notion of a big value, it is negative. It flick flacks through the zeros, so it becomes positive and then negative as we move our way to the left. Decreasing means we want this to be f prime to be in this case h prime, not f prime, but actually h prime to be less than naught. Okay. So h prime to be less than naught. And so as a result, the zones we are interested in are those two zones to the outside. Okay, it is not always the case if we're looking for the outside zones. Okay. Again, we need to check, check ourselves. We do not need to include zero. So these values are open. So as a result, we are looking for the x values that are less than minus 7 over 3 or the x values that are larger than naught. Okay, 8.4. For which values of x for the tangent of the curve be parallel to that thing? Okay, again, um, quickly, uh, let's get some pen out here. We know that for a for gra graph to be parallel, it's got to have the same gradient. So we now know that 8.4. If I wrote this in standard form, y equals 4x plus 7. So therefore, the gradient of this graph is 4. And we know that the gradient of the tangent of, of, of the function is minus 6x squared minus 14x. So we know that these two things are going to be equal. Okay, so therefore we know that naught equals 6x squared plus 14x plus 4. You can divide through by uh, 2, so 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. So we've got naught equals 3x and x. We need to get a 7, so we need to have the 2 over here and the 1 over here, positive in both cases. So as a result, x equals minus a third, or x equals minus a 2. Okay. In this case, they did not ask us to find points, they asked us to simply find the values of x. And so again, checking our question, they've asked us to find values of x, we have got values of x, so we have answered the question and we are done with today's lesson. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Have a good afternoon.